Hoi, uh, minasan, konnichiwa, samurai engineers. So in this uh, live stream, lecture, we'll have the module on design of double reports beam uh, with the use of T-beam. Okay, so T-beam. Okay, but before that, I would like to ask for confirmation of our sound check. Please sound check our uh, setup. Okay, according to somebody. So, Zairin, thank you. Shout out to you. So, clear poser or the clear. So, let us. So, let us start. So, T-beams. So, we have already example of T-beams singly reinforced. But now, we will uh, take a look at double reinforced using T-beams. Okay. So, we will only tackle those uh, concepts in the areas that are not yet uh, explained so what can what can we uh, say about the difference between t beams and rectangular beams therefore the plants the presence of plants in the t beams is uh, uh, totally obvious okay so Let us uh, browse through with these uh, concepts. Okay. Okay. So the plants could be either on top or on the at the bottom. So there are times, very exceptional cases, wherein the plants is at the bottom, but that is not. Uh, usual, okay. So, for example, uh, we have figure here, figure of uh, a slab, figure of a slab with supporting beams. So, this is a slab and supporting beams and they are a single unit okay meaning the wet concrete is poured and cured at the same time okay slab and beam so they are homogeneous okay they are homogeneous in one unit single unit so because of that uh, we already know how to uh, develop a model, a computational way to analyze slab. We are cutting down this slab into uh, constant strips, okay? constant width. Okay? We, for example, is a unit we are using one meter. English unit we are using foot, one foot. Okay? So we are cutting on. Therefore, since we are cutting on this slab, we can cut this slab like this. And actually, this cut of this slab is now a part of the beam rather than part of the slab itself. Okay? So, we can use this part to be the flange of the beam rather than a slab. Okay? So, take note of the gray portion of the uh, shaded portion okay here you are uh, looking at singly reinforced so this is singly reinforced beam because the uh, reinforcement are all at the bottom okay so all of the bottom so that is uh, figure 
and looking at the uh, next figure figure 5.2 we have okay the two types of possibility is the neutral axis going to be within the flange or the neutral axis going to be on the web rather than the flange so this is more complex with regards to computation because we have the flange part and the web part uh, on the uh, figure above you only have the flange part and therefore the computational difficulty is just similar to what we already learned okay will you notice that do we follow do we follow and actually i already have an example of this because this uh these two are both singly reinforced we already know about this okay so let's uh <coughs> excuse <coughs> let's uh, just <coughs> introduce a concept in the code okay concept in the code is that here okay <coughs> instead of considering a varying stress uh, distribution across the full width of the plants uh, the code calls for a smaller width with an assumed uniform stress distribution for the same purposes. The objective is to have the same total compression force, okay? same total compression force, okay? <clears throat> in the reduced width that actually occurs in the full width with its varying stresses. Okay? That is a concept. That is how they selected the width of the flange, okay? Note, okay? This is uh, with regards to both analysis and design. So, both analysis design of the doubly and first beam. So, on the next concept, okay? So, recall the, the huts area, okay? Or the gray area. Or the shaded area okay for t beams with the plants on both sides of the web like uh, the one we are shown because because we can have what letter l like this letter l that means the plants is only present on the one of the side rather than both sides okay so one side another side okay so, one side, another side, both sides, okay? So, for example, at the end of the slab, the end. So, the slab looks like this, and then end, the end. At the edge of those slab, so we have the supporting beam, and therefore, it looks like a letter L rather than letter T, okay? Or, uneven, for example, this uh, flange on one side, is longer than the plants on the other side okay so meaning for example right here if the edge of the beam of the slab is going to stop right here therefore it is a very short what uh, protruding part it's very short protruding part compared if we model it like this on the shaded uh, T beam, okay? So this one must be longer and uh, on the other side shorter because it is already on the edge, okay? So this is actually the cantilever portion uh, on one edge of the slab, okay? And that could be used to analyze a T beam rather than slab. So therefore, we will have what? Simpler slab because the analysis of the slab would only, for example, this is a T beam up to this point. Right? 
So that for the slab, the remaining slab would only be very small, like this. So, so you can you can analyze a very small amount of slab, and you can analyze the amount of slab as a beam. Okay, so. Therefore, we simplify or we um, we have uh, easier work on slab, but we have more complex analysis on the beam. So it transfers, no? It transfers from uh, being a slab to being a beam. No? So this is now a part of the beam. This is not a slab anymore because we model it this way. That's why, that's why without the analysis of the engineer, without the computation of the engineer, just looking at the, just looking at the drawing, just looking at the engineering plan, you will never know what type of model and analysis the engineer used. You don't even know what the effective width B okay, was used in the analysis. So, you may have a different solution. You may have a different uh, value of B. That's why each and every engineer will have a different answer. That's why one engineer is not supposed to criticize another. Okay? Because he, he do not know. He do not know the assumption. He do not know the modeling. Hmm. Maybe one engineer is modeling it uh, as T-beam and the other is modeling it as a straight up rectangular beam. Okay? You cannot see it on the you cannot see it on the engineering plan. Okay? You cannot see it. That's why an engineering design involves three. It involves what? Drawing. It involves the analysis. It involves the assumption. Okay? That is the engineering design. The analysis part is the computation and Inside the computation, you have this model. Oh, like now, right now, we are modeling it as T-beam. This part of this lab is now being modeled as included to a beam. Okay? So that is what we mean by, by modeling it. Okay? What kind of model did you use in uh, designing that part? So... That's why we do not have the knowledge how one engineer designed that particular section. Okay? So, not only that it uh, uh, depends on the load, but also it depends on the modeling, analysis, and the uh, result of the design. Okay? Do we follow? Do we follow? So there are uh, several, there are several uh, there are several instances where, uh, where I uh, came across with a social media post criticizing one engineer by another engineer. If you do not have the computation made, used by that engineer who designed that particular structure, then you don't have the way to criticize it how do you know? How do you know the modeling? How do you know the... Okay? How do you know? Okay? 
How do you know that it uh, is a mistake? Okay. How do you know that it uh, has a uh, error in the uh, dimension? How do you know? Okay. So you need to have those technical analysis. Those analysis are submitted. They are uh, submitted together with the... That's why engineers are submitting not only the drawing uh, of course the assumption and the specification are already written on the drawing but they also submit a document that is called analysis that is the computation part okay so for a for example for a for a story building the analysis would be about 50 pages or uh, 30 pages like that okay. it depends and it depends on the software used it depends on the manual calculation it depends on the engineer really okay okay so that's how it is being done so and uh And the overhanging uh, width on each side may not exceed 8 times the slab thickness. Okay. It is a code provision. 8, eight times. Okay. Times 8. Okay. So, the effective plan's width may not exceed one port of the beam span. And the overhanging width on each side may not exceed 8 times the slab thickness okay so 8 times the slab thickness okay so there are three conditions okay so take note of these three conditions okay take note of this one port okay one port then one eight okay or rather eight times one port eight times and the last one is one half the clear distance to the next web okay those are the condition so if you use one half the clear distance to the next web that means you will not you will not design this lab entirely <laughs> entirely all of this lab will be part of the beam entirely entirely all of this lab will be part of the beam and therefore the load will be directly to the beam rather than going to the slab then the slab to the beam then beam to the column and then column to the puttings okay so the uh, load will go directly to the beam because uh, all of the uh, slab would become part of the beam actually t -beam, no? and isolated so take note of this huh? take note of this three condition one port of the beam span eight times the slab thickness or one half the clear distance so an isolated uh, t beam must have a plus thickness no less than one half okay so if you have an isolated t beam one half the web width Okay. So, plan's thickness. What about the uh, plan's thickness? Okay. So, we are talking in this paragraph. In this paragraph, we are talking on the concept of the uh, plan's dimension. Okay. The plan's dimension. Okay. These are the maximum. Okay. Maximum. Not exceed. May not exceed. Okay, width may not exceed. Okay, so these are maximum. What about the thickness? Okay, no less than. So these are what? Minimum. Okay, so minimum thickness. Okay, no less than one half the width, web width. Okay, okay. so the width of the web. Okay, one half of that. So, the thickness of the plants, 
okay, must be more than that. Okay? Okay? So, for example, in our figure, here, in our figure, okay, in our figure, this is the web of the web, width of the web, okay? Web width, okay? Width of the web is BW. So, what is the thickness of this? The thickness is HF, plans height. So, thickness is HF, plans height. So, the plans height must be more than the BW over 2. That is the mathematics about that. Okay? So, divide BW by 2, HF must be equal or more than that. Okay? Okay, so that uh, is what we meant by this, okay, one half. And its effective flange width, okay, may not be larger than four times the web width, okay. Effective, effective flange width may not be larger than four times, okay, the web width. Okay, so another condition okay okay times four okay so the thickness is one up the width the width is times four okay so meaning to say in the uh, figure uh, bw times four that is the effective plans with uh, effective effective meaning from this point to this point okay that is the effective. <laughs> Hi. So, B is equal to 4 times BW. That is what we mean by that. Okay? Times 4. Okay? Okay? And this is, again, what? Must not be, may not be larger. Okay? May not be larger. So, this is the maximum. Uh, 4 times the we web width is the maximum. While in the thickness, that is the minimum thickness. Okay? Okay? If there is a plus on only one side of the web, okay, the one side, one side, meaning letter L, not letter T, okay? The width of the overhanging plans cannot exceed 112 the span okay okay 112 so if we are talking of of uh, letter l uh, 112 the span while if we are talking of t okay one port so one port the span okay in the figure we don't know the span okay for example, the span is, we don't know the span in this uh, figure. For example, the span is 10 feet or 20 feet. For example, the span is 20 feet. So 20 divided 4, that is 5 feet. Okay? So if the span is 20 feet, okay, 5 feet is the maximum. 5 feet is the maximum effective plan suite. Meaning here, this maximum must be 5 feet. Okay? Okay. So 5 feet. Take note of that. 5 feet. Next. Okay. Uh. The overhanging with on its side, so overhanging, meaning, what do you mean by overhanging? This one. From this point, from this corner to that corner, that is the overhanging. Okay? From this corner to that corner, that is 8 times the slab thickness. Okay? For example, the slab thickness is 4 or 6 inches. Okay? 6 inches, that means 
what? 6 inches is 0.5 feet. Okay. So, 0.5 feet. Okay. So, slab thickness, 0.5 feet. Okay. That is times 4. Okay. Here. Okay. Uh, 8. Times 8. Okay. Times 8. Okay. So, 8 times 0.5, that is 4 feet. So, the first one is 5 feet. The second one is 4 feet. And the third condition, one of the clear distance to the next web. Okay. For example, the uh, distance. Okay. Clear distance, meaning this corner up to that corner. For example, that is corner to corner that is 10 for example that is 10 10 feet okay so one half of that is 5 feet so that is the clear distance one half the clear distance is 5 feet so this results in 3 values 5 4 and 5 which one do you have to select the lowest one you have to select the 4, four uh, feet. 4 feet is the answer, effective. Now, okay. Okay. Uh, we are selecting 4 feet. But we still have effective plans with. Okay. May not be larger than 4 times the web width. Okay. There's a fourth one. There's a fourth condition. Okay. For example, the uh, is 12, 12 inches, the, therefore 1 foot. 1 foot is the, what? for example here, BW is 1 foot, BW is 1 foot. Okay, if, uh, I, for example, not 1 foot, uh, 1.5, for example 1.5, so 1 foot is very small, no? So 1.5 feet, 1.5 feet. So, times 4 of that, okay? Effective here, oh. 4 times the web width. The web width is 1.5 times 4. So, that means 1.5 times 4, that is 6, okay? So, therefore, there are 4 uh, consideration. 5 feet, 4 feet, 5 feet, and 6 feet. So, we have to choose 4 feet. So, that is the shorter. Okay? That is our supposed to be maximum uh, effective uh, plant width. Take note, that is maximum. You can use shorter than that. You can use even shorter than that. Okay? That is maximum. Okay? What about uh, this one? One half. So, 1.5 feet, that means that is what? 12 inches plus uh, 6 inches, so 18. No? Okay, 18 inches. One half of 18 inches, that is 9 inches. Okay? So, our uh, plant thickness must be no less than 9 inches. And that is uh, correct because the given thickness is what? Uh, six, six inches. So the requirement is what? Uh, must not be less than. Must not, must not be less than nine. So therefore, we need nine inches or ten inches rather than six inches. So we have to change. We have to change the thickness of the of the plants. Okay. Take note of this concept. So, uh, strain. Again, the same, 0 0.005. And it must not be less than 0 0.004. Okay. That is the transition. Take note. Transition region is 0.004 to 0.005. Okay. 
Okay? For 0 0.005, that is, what? 0.9? Point nine uh, reduction factor, okay. So we have this ten percent must be greater than unless the member as greater than ten percent of Ipsy prime AG, okay. Um, axial loading, okay. So that means uh, uh, you can have even less than uh, 0 0.004. Okay, that is to to have what uh, ductile ductile design, okay. or rather uh, tension control, okay? tension control. We want tension control design, okay? For members, the values uh, of C are normally very small and calculated uh, strain values are very large, okay? Then, let's continue. Okay. If uh, the neutral axis is assumed to fall within the plans, okay, so very neutral axis like this, letter A, within the plans, okay, so the same, the same as we uh, used on the previous, so the same. Okay, several types of uh, T-beams, several types of actual T-beams, okay. So, this one is the regular type of T-beam. So, this is a T-beam. We have this portion to be able to, uh, to cover the steel reinforcement. That is the function, okay. Oh, we have this, but it is nothing because that is only for what concrete cover. It has nothing to do with the strength. It doesn't add up to the strength of the structure. This one, it it uh, even uh, lowers the uh, capacity of the structure because this adds to the what? This adds to the dead load. Okay, that adds to the dead load. Or you can see it on the other side like this. Okay? You can see it differently. You can slim it down. So this one can slim it down. So you can what? Uh, listen. You can decrease the amount of dead load by what? cutting off some portion of this and it will look like this okay so these are the okay concept okay for these cases the compression uh, concrete is t shape and the uh, size shape or size of the concrete on the tension side which is assumed to be cracked has no effect so that's what i am telling you okay uh, anyway, for dead load purposes, so just like what I explained. Okay, now go to the actual analysis. Okay, so compute the design strength of beams. Okay, examples will do this. We'll have these five steps. Okay, so check first the what again the area of the reinforcement then compute this one so we already know that and then compute this one and equate this c is equal to t then we can compute t at the uh, concrete area okay concrete area so instead of a b 
So previously we are using AB because we already know the the shape is rectangular. But now we are using AC which is the area of concrete because we do not have yet the knowledge what is the value of AC. So that is the area of concrete in compression side. Okay. okay. Then we can calculate A, we can calculate C, and then calculate this stra strain. So after that, so we can finally compute uh, phi mn or the this is uh, what we call design strength. Okay. So let us go now with the sample. Okay. So this uh, procedure is uh, same, similar if you use this on the T-shape, on the L-shape, or in the inverted U. Also, you can use this triangular, circular, and so on. Actually, we already have this example. Okay? We already have this example. But anyway, let us uh, do it. So we are uh, being asked to determine the design strength of a T-beam shown in the figure with value Fc prime 4000 psi and Fy is 60 ksi. The beam has 30 foot span. Okay, 30 foot okay, span. And is cast integrally. So that is what we mean by uh, homogeneous. Okay, integrally. They are... Uh, mix by wet, wet concrete at the same time and cured at the same time. So, the word is, the technical word is casted integrally. Okay? Cast integrally. With a floor slab that is 4 inches. Okay. Slab. Thickness, 4 inches. Take the clear distance between the web is 50 inches. Clear distance. So, we have the figure. So we have the width of the web, 10. We have the value of D, value of D from the extreme fiber to the center, or cent to the centroid of the what? So that is 24 inches. We have 4 inches thickness of the flange. Okay, and we can verify the effective width. Okay, so we can verify that. So let us uh, therefore go to the solution. If you have any question, I will from time to time look at the uh, comment or chat box if you have any question. So, let's uh, continue. First, Checking the effective plant suite if that is okay. The first condition. What is the first condition? Okay. 16 HF. Why? Why 16 HF? Because one side is 8. Okay. One side is 8 times. Okay. So one side is... Uh, 8 times, and therefore there are 2 sides. So, meaning to say 16. And then, plus the width of the web. So, that is the total effective. Okay? Recall, recall, recall what happened. So recall what happened. Okay? The condition is 8 times. And there are 2. One for each side, so that's why it is 16. Okay? Take note. Take note of this. And then, if you have this, so 16, what is the height of the plants? 4. Therefore, 16 times 4. That is... 16 times 4 is 64 plus 10, so 74 inches. Okay? Next condition. Average clear distance to adjacent web. So we have clear distance 50. Okay. 
That is clear distance. Therefore, we have to add the width of the web. So, 50 plus uh, the web. And therefore, we have 60. Okay? Any question? Any question? So, 60 is our answer to the next condition. And then, the third one, the condition is span divided by 4. So, this is actually, span divided by 4 is actually here. Ah. Uh, this is what? This is the span divided by 4. One fourth of the beam span. Okay? And then it says here the overhanging wind, meaning from the corner of the uh, from the corner of the plants to the edge of the plant that is overhanging wind. That is eight. Uh, there are two of them, so times two. Okay, and then one one half the clear distance. So so one port the uh, span. So, what is the given span? The given span is how much? 30. 30 feet is the given span. Therefore, divide by 4. That is 7.5. And that is actually 90 inches. Okay? So, we can compare. Therefore, we can compare 74, 60, and 90. What I uh, said a while ago, you choose the smaller, okay? And you can use this, or you can use less than this, because this is maximum, okay? So you can use 60 or less than 60, okay? So it depends on the engineer. If uh, he wants to use 50 rather than 60, it's okay. It's okay. Why? Because this is maximum. You cannot use 65, but you can use 50, okay? Do we follow? Do we follow? So, what is the other condition? Okay. So, we have another condition here. Okay. Ah, hi. Okay. May not be larger than four times the web. No. Four times the web width. Okay. Four times the web width. Okay. So what is the uh, given web width? The web width given is 10 so times 4 40 okay so you can also use that 40 you can use 40 instead rather instead of 60 just saying i am i am doing this but that uh, 40 in this condition is actually for isolated tv so if the tv is uh, not integrally not integrally casted, but these three condition for integral cast. Okay? That is the difference. But I can use, I can use 40. Why? Why not? I did not violate the code. I did not violate the, the uh, concept because 40 is less than 60. Okay? So... I can use 40, but in this solution, uh, this solution, this uh, author use 60, okay? 60, okay, that's also good. Checking the uh, area, okay, for import area, okay, minimum. So, this is what? This is the minimum. This is the computation of minimum steel area. So, 
In our uh, formula, we only have this 3 square root of fc prime over fy. We can just what? Multiply it by b w d. Okay? Let's multiply by b w d. Okay, so after which, you can find out the answer is 0.76 square inch. Okay. So you can use, again, the another one. Uh, 200 over FY. 200 over FY is equal to 1.4 over FY. And SI. SI units. So we are using SI unit. 1.4 over FY. So multiply by this and this one. Okay. If you... Um, uh, compare. So you have to compare the two. So, this is your supposed to be minimum. Because we are, we are confronted with minimum, the higher value must be the minimum. So, if we are, uh, we are uh, talking about maximum here, therefore, the lowest, the lowest value is the maximum. Okay? So, we are looking at minimum, the higher. Okay? Therefore, uh, AS okay, is equal to 6. Okay. So, 6 times what? Here. 6 times number 9. Number 9, 1 square inch. So, times 6. So, 6 uh, square inches. So, therefore, 6 square inches is greater than this minimum. So, it's okay. Okay. We can use that. We already confirmed. So therefore, we can now go to the what? So this is the first step. First step. Still area. Then T is the second step. Compute the T. Okay. So T because we already know the still area. So we can compute the T. So, tension force, okay? So, tension force is still area times Fy. So, you just have to multiply. So, you can calculate. So, that is the step number 2. Here, as you can see here. Step number 2. Okay? Step number 2. So, now, let's go to step number 3. Compute the C and equate it to T. Okay, then compute the area of concrete. Okay, that's, uh, that's uh, step number three. Okay, take note step number three. Uh. So, let's go to that step number three. So, here. So, therefore, we already know T is 360 kips. So, what do we need to do is C. C is 0.85 if C prime times AC. So, therefore, this one, given, given. So, we now uh, determine AC. A okay? is equal to 105.88. So, what is the total? Uh, plants area alone. Plants area alone. We can determine the plants area alone. 4 inches times 60. So, 4 times uh, 60, that is 240. 240 square inches. So, the total area is 240 here. This is 105. Therefore, the uh, compression stress block is in the plants. Okay? So, it is uh, in the plants. Okay? So, it is easier because the compression stress block is on the uh, plants alone. Then, we can now directly calculate A by just dividing by what? The plants width. So, we can have the thickness. So, thickness is 1.76. Okay? Then, so for C. Okay. Beta 1 is 0.85. Why? Because the given FC prime is 4,000. PSI. If uh, the given uh, FC prime is less than 4,000, we will have the equation. 
it must be less than 0.85. Beta 1 is less than 0.85. Okay. But it is currently 4,000. That's why it is 0.85. Or divide. So we have C is equal to 2.07. Yes. Okay. I would like to uh, ask you, please confirm if you can uh, hear the the uh, sound clearly, because it is very, it's very noisy outside due to the what rushing of rain. Okay. Due to the rain, rainfall. Please confirm if you can hear the sound. Okay, uh, shout out to uh, John Wilbert. Thank you for clarifying. So, so let us uh, continue. There's heavy raining. Okay? That's why it's very noisy. I cannot hear anything. However, Okay, uh, now uh, we can now compute the uh, strain value. So, E sub T is equal to, so what? This is constant, 0 0.003 is constant. Okay, so multiply by quantity D minus C over C. So, we already know the C. This is, this equation is the reason why we have to compute for C. So we need to compute for C because of this. Okay? Because we want to find out this one. If we are going to use 0 0.9 or point uh, something other than 0 0.9. That is the reason why we have to compute for C. Okay? That's the reason here. So lowercase letter C. That is different from capital letter C. This is capital letter C. Okay? Take note of that. If you would like to find out what value of pi we are going to use, we need to determine this one. Okay? So, if you do this, the answer would be 0 0.0318. And that is, what, greater than 0 0.005. 0 0.005 is again the threshold. This is the threshold for what? For ductile. Okay? So, if the uh, material has the strain greater than 0 0.005, that is ductile. Okay? So therefore, ductile section, we will have phi is equal to 0.9. Therefore, just multiply 0.9. Okay? Uh, obviously, the stress block is entirely within the flange and the rectangular formulas apply. However, we are using the couple method as follow. Okay. Couple meaning the labor arm. Labor arm is uh, D minus A over 2. So, 24 minus A divided by 2. Okay. So, that is 23. What is A? So, A is here. Okay. So, 23.12. So, we already know the lever arm. Copole. Copole is a type of force that are opposite and equal to each other. Opposite in direction but equal in magnitude. Okay? That is what we mean by copole. 
Okay, so we need the couple lever arm. So, so this is the couple lever arm. So this is the force. So force times lever arm. This is the couple multiplied by 0.9. So we have this. Okay, so just just divide by 12 so that you have feet keeps. Okay, feet keeps. So as you can notice, this is not a doubly. This is not a double reinforced. This is single reinforced. Okay. Let's uh, continue. So, we have the next problem. So, we have the next problem here. Again, single reinforced. We have D is equal to 30. We have plants, height, 4. Then, we have width. 14. So, we are going to find out what is the effective width. We are given 8, number 10. So, the total area is 10.12. Okay, so, let us, therefore, go to the problem number 2. Okay, let us compute the design strength for the beam shown in figure 5.5. In which F C prime is four thousand and F Y sixty k s i. Check the uh, areas. Step one, area of steel. So minimum. Find out the minimum. So there are two formulas for minimum. Which one of these? So use one point four. Okay. So our area of steel is ten point twelve. So that is okay. And now, step uh, number 2, compute T. Step number 2, computing the T, ASFY. So, therefore, use the uh, value for uh, area of the steel times 60. So, we have 607. Determine AC in its center of gravity. Okay. AC, so T, we already know. Divide by 0.85 again. Uh, this is what? The capital C. Meaning the compressive force. Okay. 0.85 times 4. SI times area. Okay. Times area. That is compressive force. So this is actually compressive stress. Okay. Compressive strength. Okay. So the answer would be 178. And this is what? Greater than the plant's area. So, meaning, there must be some web participation in the area. So, we have to calculate how much. So, what is the plant's area? 120. So, 178 minus 120. That is 58.6. Right? 58.6. Is the area of concrete that must be contributed by the web portion. Okay? So the web portion contributes 58.6 square inches. Okay? So somewhere here. Somewhere here. Okay? So therefore, let us find out the uh, centroid. So, this is how you find out the centroid. You already know this. Okay. okay. So, centroid concept. Compute the distance, y bar, from the top of the plants to the gravity, to the center of gravity. Okay. So, y bar is the center of gravity. Okay. So, so what is the uh, center of gravity for 120? 120 is the area of the plants alone. So the uh, centroid there is 2 because it is 1 half the 4. 1 half of 4 is 2. That is the centroid. Okay? So multiply by the area on the web okay, times the this 4 okay, 4 times 4.19 over 2. What is 4.19? That is here. Okay. 
uh, well, four point nineteen is not here, so I will show you. <laughs> It's not here. It is, now, it is not shown on the... Uh, so the author did not show in the solution. It is not shown in the solution, but... Uh, so I will show you instead because it was not shown in the solution. So 58. So the area for the web is 58.6. Okay? So as you can see, there. As you can see here, oh, 58.6. Okay? So, 58.6. And the width of the web is how much is the uh, the width? The width is 14 here. Okay? 14. Okay? The uh, 14. 14 is 10. So, divide by 14. Okay? So, we just have to divide by 14. So, therefore, what will happen? Just divide by 14. Uh, then, we can find out that this is 4.19. Okay? 4.19. So, we follow. So, 4.19. So, let's look back at our solution. <laughs> so, Again, this author did not show us how to compute this 4.19. Oh, I already showed you. So, 4.19 is the distance of, from this corner, from this corner to the, to the uh, neutral axis. From that corner to the neutral axis. So, the actual uh, neutral axis is plus 4 because we need to plus this 4. So that's why we need to plus this 4. But, why we have to divide by 2? Because we are just uh, going to multiply the centroid. This is the centroid of the web area alone. The centroid of the plus area is 2. Okay? So meaning to say, the formula, the formula actually is the Area of the plants, centroid of the plants, plus area of the uh, web, centroid of the web. Divide by the total area, which is 178.6. If you divide that, the answer is 3.34. But without this value, I don't know why it is not included on the solution. <laughs> there, is no, there is no computation of that in the solution. Immediately. You have that answer. I can see that. That's why if you don't know how to solve it and you just copy the solution from the book, I can see your error. If the books, if the books, the solution is an error, like this. The solution is an error. Actually, maybe the author knows how to do it, of course, but the solution for finding out the value for 4.19 is not here. It's not reflected on the solution. I can see your solution. I can check your solution. Be aware of that. That's why don't copy the solution. Copy pasting. You need to understand what you're doing. Okay? Here. I know that the author doesn't have the computation for 4.19. You have to show it. Hmm. Where it came from. Okay? So, this solution, I will give zero. I will give zero for this. Because I know that you are just copying. Hmm. You did not uh, solve for the value of 4.19. And yet, you have the 4.19 in your formula. You will have zero. I will grade the zero, the solution. I will not grade the author zero. You are the student. This author is an expert. Okay? This author is an expert. I cannot give him the zero in, uh, in his solution. But you, as a student, 
with the same, if you have the same solution as this, I will give you zero. Because of this, where it came from? Where did it came from? Of course, you just copy it. Of course, you, because if you solve it, you will write it down on your uh, notes. You will write it down on your solution sheet. If you uh, solve it, therefore, you did, did not solve it. You just copied it down from somewhere. I don't know whom. From whom? I don't know from whom. Okay? But take note, uh, I'm warning you. If you have this type of solution, I can see it, I can check it, and you will get zero. Okay? From this. So, I will check the next problem. I will. If I find this out, I will not uh, read the I will not read the following solution. So after this, I found out that you will only copy it. So I will not read this other solution. I will go to the next number. For example, this is number one. I will go to the next number two. I will check your number two already. I will not waste time for this because I already know that you will just copy it, your solution. Okay, take note of that. Is there any question about that? Do you follow? You need to understand what you're doing. Okay? Need to understand what you're doing. Don't copy or if you copy, understand why. You copy, understand why. Why it is a... And... Where it came from? You you just have to ask yourself, where it came from? There are no computation of 4.19. Immediately, there is a 4.19. Okay? So... So actually, it is there oh, in the uh, lower zone. So it is just copied because you will not write this after you write this one. This must be the first line. This must be computed before you compute this equation. The sequence is not... <laughs> The sequence here is okay because it is a textbook. Okay? It is not a solution for uh, examining. Okay? So, where it came from? Actually here. So, after you use this number, you suddenly compute it. Remember, if the, uh, if the sequence is not uh, proper, the sequence is not proper, you have the power to what? To guess. You have the power to guess. Ah, the value is 4.19. Later on, I will compute it. Wow, exactly 4.19. Oh, what is that? What kind of human are you? You are superhuman. Okay? So, after using the uh, value, you compute it later on. You must compute it first before you use this into the formula. Okay. So lever arm, therefore, because of this, we can find out the distance. Okay. So 4 uh, plus uh, 4.19. Okay. That is the uh, here, 4 point over 2. Okay. Okay, so therefore, uh, we have three point thirty-four. That is our centroid. Centroid of this whole shaded area. That is the centroid of the whole shaded area. Okay. So we can what? Thirty. Okay, so this is 30 minus uh, the value of y bar. 
So, this is 30 minus the value by 1. This centroid is where the compression force acts. So, compression force is acting at the centroid of this. Okay, so Y bar. So, that's why we need to subtract. So, this answer. Therefore, uh, we can use it later. So, we can use it here. Okay, actually, we can use it here. Okay? But first, we need to find out what is A. So, 4 plus 4.19. So, that is oh, 8.19. So, therefore, we can find out the value of C. So, C. Take note here. Okay? A. So, 4 plus 4.19. So, just 8.19. So, find out C. So, C is 9.64 because we use beta 1.85 again because FC prime is 4,000. Okay? So, again, if FC prime is not 4,000 but less than 4,000, we have to have a beta uh, formula. So, and it must be less than 0.85. Okay? So, because of that, we can find out D minus C over C. Therefore, we have this value. Okay, and compare. Is this uh, equal, less than, or greater than the threshold? The threshold is 0.005. Therefore, this is ductile because it is greater than the threshold. Therefore, phi is equal to 0.9. So, therefore, use 0.9. And use the labor arm here. Therefore, you have this value divided by 12. The value is 1,214. Okay. Do we follow? Do we follow? So another method for analyzing beams, uh, you have to do this. We don't need to do this anymore. Another method. Another method is uh, just uh, using the what mechanics. Use just the mechanics, the definition of couple. Actually, I am using this type of method rather than the previous one. So I don't need to do this anymore. Just one method is enough. Okay. Don't do this anymore. Or you can uh, do it if you want. That is additional knowledge for you. Actually, I am using this type of method rather than the method above. But let's... Uh, the answer would be just the same. So now, we are uh, prepared to design TB. Okay. So we are through with analysis. That is the analysis portion. This is now the TB. Design. So, analysis portion is okay. The same portion will hold now. So, again, these are the very important parts. Okay. So, we have... Okay. In this process, a lever arm from center of gravity is estimated to equal a, the larger of two things. Okay, 0.9D or D minus... Okay, what is D? Again, from extreme compressive fiber up to the centroid of steel reinforcement. Okay, that is D. Okay, 0.9D. Or D minus HF over 2. Okay, so... Which one is larger? That is the the uh, lever arm, okay? And from this value called Z, okay, we call that value Z. That is the lever arm for TB, okay? Z. Okay? The trial is still area is calculated. So, trial meaning we may be able to recalculate later on, iterate, iterate for the second time, third time. So, don't iterate more than a third time because 
you must be able to find out the answer the second time, okay, actually. Okay. So, by this procedure, by using this procedure. Okay, so let us go to the sample. Okay. Let us design a T-beam for a floor system shown in figure 5.9 for which uh, VW and D are given. Okay. VW, 12 inches. Okay. D is 18 inches. Okay. 18 inches. Thickness of this slab, 4 inches. Okay. So, beam to beam distance. Beam to beam spacing, 10 feet. Okay, 10 feet. Okay. And MD, meaning dead load, is 80 feet kips. Live load, 100 feet kips. FC prime, 4,000. FY, 60 KSI. Simple span. So, what is the length? 20 feet. Okay. So, first, let us calculate the... Uh, Effective plant speed. Okay. Effective plant speed. A. One fourth of the uh, span. Meaning. 20 divided 4. That is 5. 5 feet. 5 feet is 60 inches. Okay. Letter B. 12 inches plus 16. 16 times 4. Okay. So this is 16. Times 4. This is 76 inches. And letter C, 10 feet is equal to 120 inches. Okay? So, this is 10 feet. Okay? So, I think this is clear distance. One half the clear distance. So, 5 so this is not a clear distance. This is rather the this is not a clear distance. I don't know why he has to use this. Okay. Okay. So anyway, this is a this will not usually control. This usually controls letter A or letter B. That is usually the controlling value. Okay. So sixty is the effective okay and then we have the assume you have to assume ductile that is ductile then uh, later on prove that uh, you have the ductile uh, condition so our service load 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 uh, live load. So we have the following. Therefore, what is the nominal? So divide by 0.9. So we have nominal. Okay. So, liver arm. So, liver arm. Take note of this. Okay. So, 0.9. Either 0.9. The larger of the two. Which one is the larger? 0.9 or D minus HF over 2. So, 16. So, 16. So, the larger one is 16.2. Okay? Okay? So, 16.2. Therefore, use that value. Okay? For the labor arm. So, what is this? This is uh, T. This is the tensile force. Okay? So, tensile force multiplied by Z. That is moment. Middle moment. So, therefore, we can find out the still area, okay, by using MN that we already determined here. Uh, Z already determined here, 16.2. And FY is given. So, uh, 12 here is just the conversion factor, converting inches, uh, feet to inches, okay. So, therefore, if you do this, the answer would be 3.51 or still area. So, therefore, computing the values of A and Z. Okay, so we have following point it was. So, this is what? Compressive force 
is equal to tensile force. So, we already know, because of this, we find out AS, so multiply that by FY, so we have 0.85 FC prime AC, okay? So, therefore, we can find out the value of AC. Okay? AC is uh, just uh, divide, multiply this one and divide by this one, so we have AC, which uh, is actually what? Less than 4 times 60. What is 4 times 60? 60 is our plans width and 4 is our plan thickness. We are verifying if uh, this area is inside the plants. So it is inside the plants. The neutral relax is in the plants. Okay? So since that is the case, we can just immediately divide so that we can find out the value of A. So, we can uh, find the value of C, T minus A over 2. So, the value is uh, 17. So, we assume what? We assume 16.2. But the actual is 17. Okay? So, recalculate because uh, we already found. The... Okay. So, I have to show that. Okay? So, here. We have uh, value of A by dividing immediately this one. 61.9. Divide by 60. So we have. Then find out the value of Z. Z is the lever arm. And uh, our answer now. By substituting D is equal to 18. A is equal to 1.03. Divide by 2. 17.48. And this is not our assumption. This is our assumption. Okay. This is assuming. Okay. Assume. We have to use the correct value. So, the correct value is 17. So, therefore, we have to recalculate, recompute. Calculate AS with this revised value of Z. Okay? So, calculate again with this revised. Okay? So, because we use it, this one, we use it here to find the AS. Okay? So, because of that, we just have to replace the 16.2, replace it by 17.48. So, the actual area is 3.25. Okay? And because of that, compute again. Compute again. The same process here. The same process, this one. Same process. And we found out again that the value of Z, after finding out the value of A, Z is equal to 17.52. 17.52. We uh, assume 17.48. Therefore, that is acceptable. If I am the one, if I am the engineer, I will accept this. 17.48 is equal to 17.52. So, that's why it is engineering. In mathematics, they are not equal. 17.48 is not equal to 17.52. If you are a mathematician, but if you are an engineer, this is okay. They are equal. Do you understand now? Do you follow what I am trying to say? Follow? Calculating AS with this revised the value of Z. Okay, so this uh, this uh, author did not accept. This author did not accept. That's why I recalculate. <laughs> recalculate. <coughs> he recalculate the value. But later I found out that AS here 3.25. AS here is 3.25. The same. <laughs> okay, close enough. <laughs> they are close enough. That's why I immediately accept the value 17.52 is equal to 17.48. I accepted it because I know they will resort in the same. <laughs> I know they will resort. But the beauty of this, the author, which is an expert, already know this. Just to show us, just for learning purposes, he make this step. Just for learning purposes. Okay? Oh, okay, close enough to previous value. Therefore, use that. Okay? Checking minimum reinforcing. Oh, minimum. So, there are two. 
So, compare which one is a uh, uh, the answer. So, 0.68 or 0.72. So, we need 0.72. But still, 0.72 is less than 3.25. Therefore, it is okay because we we have 3.25 square inches so our steel area. This is minimum. It's okay. So, next, we can uh, go to the table, find the minimum row, minimum steel area. Okay, if you use that, so minimum 0.003 multiply by this, and the answer is this one. It's still okay. So, from table, from computation, from formula, the answer is okay. So, next, let us find out the value of C, the uh, strain, and the phi. So, beta 1, we know to be 0.85 because uh, FC prime is 4,000. So, A is 0.96. Okay. So, we already have this... Where do we have that? A, 0.96. Here, 0.96. We already have this computed here. 0.96. Okay? So, therefore, 0.96. So, here, 0.96 divided by 0.95. C is 1.13. So, after finding C, we can call, calculate the strain. So, strain is 0 0.045, which is again greater than 0 0.005. Therefore, phi is 0.9. And therefore, we prove that our computation is correct because we assume 0.9. Okay? And with 0.9, using this... Uh, area of reinforcement. Okay? Do we follow? Okay, next. Next example. We have the next one. Design a T-beam for the floor system shown figure 5.10. So, for which uh, BW and D are given dead load 200 Live load, 425, FC prime, 3,000. Okay, we will have the different beta 1. Okay, take note. Remember, we have to compute beta 1. Okay. FY, 60. Simple span, 18. Okay, let's go to the figure. The figure states that we have BW, 15. We have D, 24. And we have uh, HF, Three, okay. So those are the important things, and also this one, six feet, beam to beam distance, okay. So let's start therefore with the effective plan width, okay. Effective plan width, one fourth of the span. The span is eighteen, so therefore eighteen divided four that is uh, fifty four inches, okay. Letter B. BW plus 16 times 3. So that is 63 inches. And letter C, 6 feet is equal to 72 inches. Okay? So therefore, therefore, which one is the lowest? 54 inches. So let us use 54 inches as effective plans with. Okay? So, moment, assuming phi is equal to 0.9. So, we have uh, 1.2, dead load, plus 1.6, live load is equal to 920. So, divide by 0.9. So, we have 1,022 feet keeps. So, next, uh, after that, uh, find out the lever, lever arm, Z. Note that the compression area in this lab is very wide and thus its required depth is very small. Okay. Wide and small. Okay. 
Z, 0.9, So, compare the two. So, 22.5 is higher. Okay? So, for our C. But this is the assume. Assume, assume by liberal arm. Okay. Assumption. Let us assume. Larger of the two. That is provided on the code. Okay? Assume. Okay? You can assume that. Okay? Or in the concept. I have yet to see that uh, provision in the code, but it is explained by the author. So maybe it is uh, what? A uh, theoretical concept. The larger of the two. Okay. Phi D versus D minus uh, HF over 2. So this is what? HF over 2. So 24 minus 1.5, 22.5. So, we have 22.5 as our lever arm. So, after that, we can therefore trial still area. Try it out using that lever arm. Okay. What is this? This is T. Ah, this is the moment. Moment. Uh, conversion factor. Uh, moment uh, is equal to a lever arm times this uh, FY. So, FY and lever arm. If you do that, you can calculate this one. AS. Checking the values of A and Z. So, concrete area, therefore, using that, using this computation, okay, equate to but compressive is equal to tensile forces. So, compare, we can find out the area of concrete. So, area of concrete, compressive part of concrete. So, find out if this is on the plants. Okay? So, the stress block extends down to the web. Okay? Because it is more than the plants area. The plants area is 3 times 60. Okay? 3 times what? 3 times, actually, 3 times 54. 3 times 54. Okay. So, by using 3 times 54, you have to do it here. How can you say? How can you say that the stress block extends down? Oh, there is no solution. Okay. So, you need to solve 3 times 54 first. Okay. So, solve 3 times 54. Before uh, you use it, so three times fifty four equals one hundred sixty two. So well, that is one hundred sixty two. Your area is two hundred thirteen. So therefore, it is more than the flans. Therefore, it extends to the uh, web. Okay. So, 213.6 minus 162. So, let us compute. 213.6 minus answer. So, we have what? 51.6. So, 51.6 divided by the width of the web, which is 15. So, divide by 15. So let us divide by 15. So our answer is, you have to compute this. You have to compute 3.44. So 3.44 is the extension to the web part. So 3 plus 3.54. So 6.54 is the value of A. So, now, here, this is 3.54 divided by 2. So, because we are 1. Area of the plants, centroid of the plants, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So, 51.6. So, you use 51.6, but you did not compute it. There is no computation here again. There is no computation again of 51.6. So, this solution is again zero. Copying. 
How can you use the value 51.6? There is no computation. Okay? So, I am uh, explaining to you line by line, step by step. How, how did you arrive with 51.6? There is no computation. So, so, multiply by the centroid. Okay, okay. So, therefore, y bar, you have 2.28. So, therefore, uh, you can just what? subtract d d minus y bar so we have 21.72 okay 21.72 is uh, 21 take it to that take the calculator off so therefore we have what as is 9.41 using this value okay but this is the moment, nomin nominal moment, divided by Fy, divided by uh, Z, the labor arm. So therefore, 9.41. The still area could be refined a little by repeating the design, but the space is not used to do this. <laughs> but the space is not used to do this. <laughs> if this is done... <laughs> So, he solved it, the author solved it, but uh, to economize the uh, paper. So, if I, if I check that you do this, you will get zero again. Because you are not the author of the book and you are just copying. No? Okay? You have to solve this. You have to solve this. Okay? So, after solving this, you can proceed. Okay, you can use it. Uh, by the way, you don't need to uh, go to the table. You can use the what? You can use the uh, formula instead. Not the table. It's the formula for Roman. Okay. Okay, so use the formula for Roman. And we'll, we'll really use that here. Uh, not here. We, are, uh, we did not use it here. So, we can use the formula instead. Uh, rather than doing that, so use the formula in order to find out this one. Okay. This is the formula for finding. So, you just have to multiply by area. Multiply by area, you have 1.2 square inch, which is less than 9.51. Okay, so therefore, our value 9.41 is, okay, actually, 9.51. Okay? So, therefore, let us find out the A. So, 3 plus 3.44. Okay, so C divided by 0.85. So, this is bad. This is not correct. Beta 1 is not 0.85. Okay. So again, this solution is wrong. So that, if you copy, that is wrong. So the correct value for beta 1, I will show you, I will show you the correct value for beta 1. Okay. I know the formula for SI, but I don't know the formula for, for what? I, I do not uh, know the formula using English unit. So, okay, just uh, give me 10 seconds. Give me 10 seconds, I will find out.
if FC prime is 4,000, the value is 0.85. So, I will show you the computation. The formula is, uh, show you the computation. That is uh, not correct. That is an error. Okay. So, the value would be, Point eighty-five. I am computing beta one. Beta one is equal to point eighty-five minus. This is for English units, ah, English unit. This is uh, minus point zero five. You have to memorize this actually. You have to memorize this because it is required in the board exam. So FC prime is three thousand. You have to put in. But uh, if C prime, aha, less than 3,000, okay. So less than 4,000 is okay. So 3,000 minus 4,000 divide by 1,000, okay. Then the answer is, 0.9. Okay. Beta 1 is 0.9. Now, beta 1 cannot be 0.9. So, the computation is 0.9. Beta 1 maximum is 0.85. Minimum is 0.65. So, therefore, although, although, although the solution is uh, uh, with the missing, with missing computation, is still beta 1 is equal to 0.85 because it is compared with 0 0.9. 0 0.9 versus 0.85. So 0.85 is our answer because 0 0.9 is greater than 0.85. Why? 0.85 is the maximum. 0 0.65 is the minimum. Remember that. 0 0.65, 0 0.85. Okay. So, for example, if the if our computation uh, gives us the answer from the formula, for example, the answer from the formula is uh, not 0 0.9 and, uh, for example, 0 0.7. Therefore, we have to use 0 0.7 rather than 0 0.85. Do we follow? Do we follow? Do we follow? That's uh, unnecessary uh, formula necessary to calculate because uh, our FC prime is not uh, is not the usual 4,000. The usual value is uh, 3,000 to 4,000 but okay, we have that uh, beta 1. Okay? Therefore, uh, using that Value 7.58. Therefore, we have the answer 0 0.0065. And that is also greater than the threshold region. So, therefore, correct. We are correct in assuming that phi is equal to 0.9. We are correct. So if uh, the calculation for strain and uh, phi are repeated using the more refined values of AS, then... Okay, we have the following. So, this is the final answer of the author. Okay. Therefore, that tends the uh, example. So, let's go to the next topic. Okay. What is this? So the compression force provided by overhanging plants rectangles must be balanced by the tensile force 
in part of the tensile test while the compression force in the web is balanced by the tensile force in the remaining tensile. Ah, so we, you, you can also you make this. This is uh, this type of method, this type of solution is also okay. This is also okay. So, so that you can what? You can uh, separate the uh, reinforced area. Which one is uh, going to counteract with the other? Compressive and uh, tension part must uh, counteract. Which one is for which one? So you can use this, but uh, it is not uh, adding. This does not add to our knowledge because we already know the minimum uh, concept in what mechanics mechanics of rigid bodies okay? so in mechanics of rigid bodies that is a concept okay? so that's why it is uh, okay to do the concept of what uh, force component component of forces okay? so design of tibins for negative moments so for negative moments we have this uh, topic. Okay. So when T beams are uh, resisting uh, negative moments, their plans will be in tension and the bottom of their stems will be in compression. Okay, so it reverse. Okay, negative moments. Where do you find out the negative moments? So in a uh, turbine structure, where? Can you say in the uh, chat box, please? Please answer in the chat box. Where can you find Where can you find the Okay. How much is this? Two? Three, two. Okay. So you can use the chat box for your answer. Please answer it. Where do you find negative moments on the system? Okay, if you have that, therefore, obviously, such situations the uh, rectangular beam uh, design formulas will be used. Okay. But the uh, diagram is upside down because negative moment, therefore, the diagram is upside down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the code requires that part of the uh, flexural steel in the top of the beam, the negative moment region, be distributed over the effective width of the plants or over a width equal to one-tenth of the beam span. One-tenth of the beam span. We already have, we already have this concept. We already talked about that concept. Ten percent. Okay? Of the uh, beam span. Whichever is smaller. Okay? Distributed over the uh, effective width or the uh, one tenth of the beam span, whichever is smaller. Should the effective width be greater than one tenth of the span length, the code requires that some additional longitudinal steel be placed in the outer portions of the flats. Okay. 
Eber. Okay. Outer portion. Okay. Of the flange. The intention of this part of the code is to minimize the sizes of the flexural cracks. Okay. Take note. Very important. To minimize the sizes of the flexural cracks. Why? Why I'm taking this emphasis? Because we cannot go further more. So next me next week would be our final exam. And therefore, I would not be able to discuss to you the serviceability limit that could compute the crack. Okay? Therefore, let's uh, tackle this out. Okay? So it could minimize the size of flexural crack that will occur in the top surface of the plants perpendicular to the stem of a T-beam. Okay? Subject to negative moments. Okay? So, in the previous section, it was stated that if rectangular section had a very small amount of uh, tensile reinforcement, its design resisting moment might very well be less than its cracking moment. If this uh, were the case, the uh, beam might fail without warning. We already know the what? The uh, balance design, the uh, over and the under no? design. Okay. So the same situation applies to T-beams with a very small amount of tensile reinforcing. When the plans of a T-beam is in tension, okay, the amount of tensile enforcing needed to make its uh, ultimate resisting moment equal to its cracking moment is about twice that of a, take note, twice, okay, the amount of tensile reinforcement bars needed to make its ultimate resisting moment equal to its cracking, about, okay, twice that of the rectangular section or that of a T section with its flange in compression. As a result, okay, so take a look here. So this is what? This is the compression side. This is now tension side because the moment is negative, okay? So, I do not see any Answer from the chat box. I don't see any answer from the chat box. There's no chat. There's no chat answer from the top chat. All messages are visible. Tagel timestamp, okay? So there is only one. There is only one student right now. The only one is Paulo. Is only one listening right now. <clears throat> so, so I use the what the timestamp. Okay, so I use timestamp. 
you don't even know where you can find negative moment. So, I don't even recall anything about the theory of structure. Where can you find the uh, negative moment? There are no answer. I waited for five minutes. There are no answer. Okay, anyway, um, that is your responsibility. You have to review about uh, theory of structure. Okay. So, the code, therefore, states that, okay, the maximum or the minimum amount of reinforcing required equals the larger of the two values. Okay, so take note of this. Okay. Which we, are, which we are actually using. Which we are actually using. So minimum, we need to have this minimum on that side of the, on that side of the uh, section, on the side of the core section. For statically determinate members with their flanges in tension, BW in the above expression is to be replaced with either 2BW. Okay? 2BW. Okay? Okay, BW. You have to replace this by either 2BW or the width of the flange. Whichever is is smaller, okay? So the width of the plants is, uh, of course, greater than BW. So the smaller one is actually 2 BW. That's why it is times 2. Okay, so usually uh, 95, 95 to 98% of the time, that is uh, what? That is the smaller one. Okay. Okay, next uh, topic, uh, L-shaped beams. Oh, just like what I've said, L-shaped T-beam is uh, the same. Okay. Also, take note, our reference uh, textbook, McGregor. So it's being referred to here. Okay. Meaning, McGregor is one. Actually, McGregor is being referred to also by by the code. Okay? That's why you can see which one is the better author okay, to follow. Okay? <coughs> so, we can use the T-beam style technique in order to solve for L-shape. For L-beams, the effective width of the overhanging plants may not be larger than 112. So, this is provision of the code. 112. Okay? So, 1 over 12, the span length of the beam. Okay? 1 over 12. Okay? So, for a T-beam, actually, that is 1 over 4. Okay? But here, 1 over 12 for overhang. Okay? Uh, six times the slab thickness, okay, six times slab thickness, one half the clear distance to the next web. So, so, provision. So, there are provision for T and L shape on the code. Compression still. So, meaning we are now going to the doubly reinforced. So, because we have we are going to talk about the uh, steel reinforcement of the top, okay? So the steel that is uh, used is called compression steel. The beams with both tensile and compressive steel are referred to as doubly reinforced, okay? So, uh, 
So, compression steel is not normally required in section this the strength method because use of the full compressive strength of the concrete decidedly decreases the need for such reinforcement. Okay? As compared to design made with the working stress design. So, what is a working stress design? This is equal to ASD. Working stress design is also called alternative or stress design okay so the same same here and therefore let us go to the what is that what is that this is is this compression tensile reinforced beam maximum percentage of steel okay resting couple Compression steel is very effective in reducing long-term deflection. Okay. Due to sinkage and plastic flow. In this regard, you should uh, note the effect of compression steel on the long-term deflection expression. Okay. So, for other type of, but just like what I've said, serviceability limit. That is, we cannot uh, do it anymore. That is chapter 9. So we are only chapter 5. Okay. <coughs> right. What are the other important things? <coughs> <coughs> ties. Okay. What do you mean by ties? Uh, number 10 bars. And the smaller. Okay. Number 10 bars and smaller. So that is what we mean by stirrup. Stirrup is called ties. Okay. Okay. That is what we mean by ties. Stirrups. So in your engineering plan, that is called stirrups in your plan. Okay. Stirrup. The ties may not be spaced farther apart than 18, uh, 16 bar diameter. Take note of this. 16 bars, 48 tie diameters, or at least dimension, the least dimension of the beam cross-section, okay? That is the spacing of ties. May not be spaced. So, these are the maximum. So, there are three conditions for maximum ties spacing. 16 bar diameters, and uh, what? 48 tie diameter. If we say 16 bar diameter, that is the main reinforcement. If we say tie diameter, that is the stirrup. Okay? So, or the third one, the third condition is the beam cross section, the least dimension, the beam position. Uh, the least dimension is the width. width okay? That is the least dimension. Okay, for a uh, double reinforced beam, we have this. Okay. If the strain, okay, the uh, compression steel yields as well as the uh, tensile steel. Oh, that is the assumption. Compression steel is also yielding. But tensile steel is always assumed to yield. <coughs> okay. If the strain at the extreme fiber of the compression component is assumed to equal 0 0.003. Okay. Extreme fiber of compression concrete. Okay. And the compression steel is located two-thirds of the distance from the neutral axis to the extreme concrete fiber. Then the strain in the compression equals. So that is just tracing proportion because... We are on the same line, straight line. Straight line diagram of strain uh, model. Okay? Okay. Ah. So that's how uh, we have it. 0 0.002 because it is uh, in two-thirds. So, therefore, 
we have that uh, idea. So, so what else? Another concept here. When a uh, compression still is used, nominal resisting moment of the beam is assumed to consist of two parts. A. The part due to resistance of compression concrete and the balancing tensile reinforcing. So it is a balancing effect on the other side. And the uh, due to the resistance of the compression concrete. Okay. So we can therefore compute it separately and add up then equate to the tension side okay so add the contribution of concrete compression and then the steel compression then equal to the tension of steel okay and this situation is illustrated in the following figure this figure okay uh, and the expression developed here the effect of the concrete in compression which is replaced with the compression compressive steel AS prime so that is what we mean by AS prime AS prime is at the top AS is the, at the bottom so AS1 AS2 so we have 1 2 this AS2 is the balancing this is the balancing for this one so this is for the uh, concrete uh, compression area AS1 okay <laughs> this omission will cause us to overestimate MN MN by very small and negligible amount less than 1% imagine the computation will just be very simple and yet the error is less than one percent the first of the two resisting moment this is illustrated in figure 5.13b okay this is 5.13b okay so moment moment one moment two okay so this is moment one here so what is this this is the tensile force multiplied by the moment arm okay tensile force force multiplied by labor arm okay so this one is not the tensile force this is actually compression force due to steel okay multiplied by the again the moment arm okay that is okay so the second resisting moment is produced by the additional tensile and compressive steel which is presented in EOC so we have the second first so we just have to what very clear enough it's clear enough okay you just have to add the moment so if you are looking for mn so that means mn1 plus mn2 okay so we are just look talking about uh, steel so the couple of steel okay so this is the what the ordinary one so the ordinary singly reinforced computation this is now the additional so in order uh, for us to be able to analyze it properly using the what this one and this one okay take note again of this huh? because it's very important 
the effect of concrete okay in compression which is replaced by the compressive steel is neglected what do you mean by that this letter b must have a what a hole must have a hole in the concrete area but it is neglected what hole is that the hole for the reinforcement here okay but it is neg neglected because the uh, error is less than one percent okay and that is what we mean by that so just the same we have the next so we have again the second the second expression is tensile and compressive steel okay so okay so here as prime times fs prime okay so as2 times fy do you follow do you follow the difference so this is at the bottom reinforcement this one okay which is equal to as prime fs prime why it is fs prime because it could be yielding it could not be yielding and that is allowed okay it is allowed okay so whether or not uh, the steel is yielding on the upper part is just okay but we have to assume we have to assume that it is also yielding we are going to design it yielding at the tension side but it is also okay if this yields and usually we assume it as yielding but it is not always the case and if it is not yielding it is just okay because here f is f is prime okay f is prime rather than fy prime okay Take note of the different FS is different from FY. Okay, so we can use the uh, tension side. Okay, so therefore, if we have that, so we have the complete formula, then just multiply by pi. So, in addition of compression steel only on the compression side of the beam, we'll have the little effect on the nominal resisting moment of the section. Okay, the lever arm, Z, of the internal couple is not affected very much by the presence of compression steel. And the, uh, not affected very much, okay, not affected very much, okay. So, take note. Uh, we, you have what D and D prime, okay? What do you mean by D prime here? Oh? D prime is there, D prime, so therefore D minus D prime, okay? So prime meaning at the compressive region or area, okay? So the value of Mn is equal to Zz will change very little to increase the nominal resisting moment of the region. It is necessary to add reinforcing on both the tension and the compression side of the beam. If you want to what? To increase the nominal moment. Thus providing another resisting moment of all. Okay? So that's why it's easier to analyze it that way. Do we follow? They follow because MN is equal to MN1 plus MN2. If you need another one, plus MN3. That's why it's easier to understand. Okay. So we have 
uh, examples to illustrate the calculations in determining the design strength of the reinforced uh, section and each of this problem is train fs prime okay this is not strain this is stress type of error i think this is type of error fs prime is in the uh, compression steel is check to determine whether or not it has yielded so we want to check it with the strain uh, obtained the compression still stress so still stress not a uh, strain still stress this is supposed to be epsilon prime s right epsilon prime s is determined in the value of AS2 is computed with the following expression, okay? So, in addition, it is the necessary tensile steel because if it is uh, less than 0 0.005, necessary to compute the strain. The value of the bending uh, reduction factor will have to be computed in as fast as will be less than 0.9 value. The beam may not be used in the unlikely event that uh, strain is less than, okay. So, if uh, the value is 0 0.004, so the transition period is only 0 0.004 to 0 0.005. If less than 0 0.004, meaning 0 0.003 to 0 0.004, that is the what balance. And we are not going to use that region, okay? According to the code, okay? Determine uh, the value of this strain. Uh, an equilibrium equation is written, which upon the solution will yield the value of C. And that's the location of neutral axis. To write this equation, the nominal tensile strength of the beam is equated to the nominal... Uh, Compressive strength, only one unknown appears in the equation, that is C. Okay, so as you can verify from this, so we have this equation. This is the total uh, tension. So we have the compression first term and then the steel. Compre concrete, okay, concrete, compression, steel, compression, Add them both, then that is equal to the tension force. Okay? Okay? So, C is an unknown. So, find out the value of C. Okay? Like this. Okay? Okay? So, take a look. This is yield. If you assume yielding of the compression reinforcement, assuming. Okay. okay, so referring to the strain diagram from similar angle. So, similar formula that uh, we are uh, already been using. Same formula. Because of that, we can substitute it right here and therefore okay why okay so after uh, having this if the strain in the compression steel is greater than ey okay okay the assumption is valid and fs prime is at yield okay therefore it is yielding okay if strain prime is less than EY, okay, the compression is still is not yielding in the value of C calculated above is not correct. Because why? Because of this, you use this equation. Must be F S prime. Okay? That is the reason why that 
the value of c is not correct. Okay? Do we follow? Do we follow this? Okay. The new equilibrium equation must be written that assumes, okay, that assumes fs prime is less than fy. So we have to assume this. Because fy is the maximum, that's why you have to have a value of fs prime less than fy. Okay? Do we follow? Do we follow? So therefore, if that is the case, okay, so as prime multiply by fs which is strain times es and es is constant okay this is constant so you can use this okay so that the es is actually 29 uh, thousand k si do we follow Okay. So again, on the uh, internal strains and forces for doubly reinforced rectangular beam, we have the following. So we have the concrete participation on the total compression uh, force. We have the steel participation on the compression side, and we have the steel on the tension side okay so they must be equal so cs prime plus cc is equal to t okay so that is uh, for our stress how about for our strain strain is like this strain diagram so we can solve for e strain tension side so strain tension side must be greater than 0 0.005. Greater than 0 0.004. Okay? So this is the value of C. And this is the value of E S prime. If this is the value of 0 0.003. Okay? So we follow. Now, uh, let's just go to the examples. Okay, example number seven. So, determine the, the design, moment capacity of the beam shown in the figure with this 14 inches here, 14 inches. D is what? D is 21.5 plus 2.5. That is uh, 24. D prime is 2.5. Ah, uh, yes, 2.5. There are two reinforcement on compression side. There are four on the tension side. So, number 11. So, there are, what, four but different size. Number 9 for top bars. Number 11 for bottom bars. So, it is uh, a little bit harder and uh, for the actual construction, it's a little bit harder no? to uh, perform during the construction. There are two different sizes. 11, number 11 times 4, total of 6.25. Number 9 times 2, total of 2. You have to compute this. You have to compute this because you have what? Table. You have a table. You have the table of... Still bars. I have to compute that. The area. You have to compute the area. Now, uh, writing the uh, equilibrium equation. Fs prime is equal to Fy. Okay. So, Fy is given 60. KSI FC prime is 3,000 
and uh, fs prime is just equal to fy assuming no? assume that fs prime also yields okay so therefore we have this equation okay so substitute substitute all the necessary so 0.85 bc prime b times a so a is beta 1 times c so we have this c is unknown so a is prime 2 then 60 so let us uh, compute for the value of c the value of c is uh, computed as this okay so 8.41 so therefore we can find out the value of a Computing the strains in compression steel to verify assumption that the, the shielding. So let us verify. So therefore, just ratio in proportion because that is what? Triangle. That is a triangle by using similar triangle concept. In mathematics, uh, similar triangle that is in geometry, okay? Similar triangle. So, we have what? The following C minus D, D prime over C times 0 0.003. So, using this, you can find out uh, strain prime. Strain prime is this one, okay? What about for strain uh, yield? So yield over ES, therefore 0 0.00207. So what happened? Which one is greater? So strain prime is greater than strain yield. So therefore... Uh, the uh, compression reinforcement is also yielding and that is the assumption therefore we are uh, correct in our uh, computation we are still correct so this is correct so therefore not example shows uh, what to do if uh, this assumption is not so it is still correct so we have to continue so, it is easier if this is correct. <laughs> it's easier. So, this one, AS2 is equal to AS prime, FS prime over F prime. So, what happened? That is just ratio in proportion. That is just ratio in proportion. Because AS2 is the contribution balancing the tension uh, side with the what so that is also two that is the tension side balance of the compression steel bars two square inch okay so two square inches therefore as1 is equal to as minus as2 so just uh, subtract what remains is 4.25 remaining 4.25 so the uh, tension strain is how much the tension strain so point zero zero five five seven and it is greater than point zero zero five so for the tension side that is still okay therefore uh, we can use 0 0.9 as our phi value. Then the uh, design moment strength is just multiply by 0 0.9. Multiply it. So we have the following value. Yeah, very short. Uh, it's very short because we found this assumed uh, condition as correct. Okay. So now let us go to the next example. Compute the design strength of the section shown. Okay. So. Okay. 
So we have what? We have uh, two steel bars, number seven. Total is 1.2. Four, number 10. So total is 5.06. So we have the following dimension. The same. The same as the uh, example number seven. So this is the same. The, uh, this is the only difference, huh? 2, number 7, 4, number 10. The dimensions are the same, but the what? 2, number 9, that is 2, number 7, and this is 4, number 11, right? So, the sizes of the reinforcement are different, okay? But now, the procedure, the same. Procedure, solution, assume... Okay, assume f prime is equal to f y. Therefore, we have this. Therefore, we can solve for this unknown value of c. Take note. This is point eighty-five. F c prime b. A a is uh, beta one c. That is. Then we have this a s prime and uh, f y. Because of the assumption, this is our assumed value. Therefore, we have value of C. Then, multiply by beta, we can have the value of A, which is 4.86. Computing the strains. Okay. Verify if uh, really the shielding. Verify. So, using this uh, recent proportion formula. Okay. So, ratio in proportion ES prime is to point zero zero three as C minus D prime is to C. So, that is the ratio in proportion. So, we have point zero zero one six nine. And this is what? Greater. Okay. So, ES prime is less than point zero zero two seven two zero seven. This is the yielding value of strain. So, therefore, the uh, compression side of steel did not yield. Therefore, our assumption is not correct. Since the assumption is not valid, we have to use the equilibrium equation that is based on Fs prime, not yielding. So, therefore, we have to use this. Okay? This formula instead. Okay? This formula. Rather than this one. This is not correct, so replace it by this one, okay? So, replacing it, again, we have the value of C as the unknown. So, it is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation. Okay, like it. Solving the quadratic equation. So, this equation... Simplify. This is quadratic equation. Okay. So solving that, C is equal to 6. It. So you, you have to show this one. If your, uh, if your solution is this one, and you say solving equation, C is equal to, uh, this is copying. This again, 0 points. You have to show simplify and then solve for C. Do not just use the C value. Okay? Solve for C. We can simplify that and we can solve for C. Okay? That is only algebra. Okay? And by that, uh, we have... Uh, the value for C, therefore, substitute the value for C, which is 6, okay, minus uh, D prime, which is 2.5, therefore, multiply by 0 0.003, you have what? 0 0.0175. And that is less than uh, strain at yield point. Therefore, now, it is now correct. Because strain at yield point is 0 0.00207. This is, uh, okay, now, our solution is now okay. And then next, Fs. Therefore, we can just multiply. 
multiply this uh, value to the constant so 50 okay our f s prime is 50 rather than 60 so f y is 60 okay take note therefore the uh, steel bars at the compression side is not yielding so after which you can find the uh, area for that steel bars 1.015 ratio in proportion then uh, find the area for the uh, another steel bar so this is steel bars is for the balancing of the compressive steel this is for the uh, concrete okay uh, counteraction with the concrete so it is 4.05 you just have to subtract the total as okay so the total as So the total is is uh, here on here total is here number 10 times 4 5.06 you have to compute that so that computation is right here 5.06 okay so minus this one so this one then again ratio in proportion for our tension strain Okay, so tension strain, therefore 0.009, and that is ductile, so therefore this is okay. Another assume, assumption that uh, we prove, okay, to be okay. So therefore, uh, just multiply this equation by that, so multiply by 0.9, so take note, this is the first mn1 this is mn2 okay so mn1 is equal to mn plus mn2 okay so multiply by the what uh, multiply by the corresponding level arm so level arm is d minus d prime okay so the answer is this one 488.6 okay that is the analysis part so let's go to the design Okay, the same concept, the same formulas. So immediately we have the design part. Design meaning we have to find the dimension. Okay, so let us design a rectangular beam for dead load, live load, FC prime 4000, FY 60,000, maximum permissible beam dimension figure 5.17 so we have the service load 1030 solution assume 0.9 okay so this is just the reverse process this is just the reverse process of what we are doing so we are starting on the moment so while on the previous example uh, 7 8 we are starting on the dimension and find out the moment okay so let's know uh, what uh, great difference about this the same concept so we'll just push uh, through with this any question with this okay so the same same uh, use of symbols and uh, different dimension 15 31 25 3 so different dimension but we have the same equations same equation same equation same equation okay same equation here but used differently we are actually solving as1 is equal to as minus as2 when we are analyzing but when we are designing uh, this is the way we do it okay and then you are going to try something try the size of the steel bar okay for the compressive 
part and then try for the uh, steel part or uh, tension side. Okay. So after which, uh, if we are able to select steel bars, then uh, check if the uh, tension strain is actually 0 0.005 or more because if that is uh, the case therefore we are correct in assuming uh, phi is equal to 0.9 okay? so sometimes this happen Sometimes this happen. But now what happened in actual, this always happen. Most of the case, most of the case, yeah, because the area is, is but solved. You can solve the area. And then you have to try. You have to try. If the sub area is not equal this is okay because they are equal. But if the solved area is like this, like this, actually you, this author and any other author, any other author, any other author, not only this author, is using the area which is greater than 9.6. We You have to use the area equal or less than, a little bit less than. So that it is always ductile. But McGregor, McCormack, they are using greater than. So that's why we always have this case. That is the reason why we always have this case. And therefore try again. <laughs> try again with another size of steel bars. You have to try it again. So, after trying it again, okay, trying different size, meaning, the meaning of trying again is use this actual, use this actual area in order to prove this. So, so, proving what? The moment load is 10.20 okay so it is less than 10.30 oh, therefore no good okay because the uh, capacity of the uh, structure is less than the load so it will uh, what? be overloaded okay so let us use another Let's try another size of steel bars and doing it like this again and again. Try it again until such time that you can show that you have what? 1060 is greater than 1040 or 1030. 1030 is the load. So you have 1060. So it is now greater. Your uh, structure is greater than the load. No, therefore, it is okay. That's how you do it. Okay? And then, actually, uh, you can use bundle bars and also, okay? Note that, okay, number 10 bars will not fit in a single layer in this beam if they were placed in two layers. Okay? The centroid with the to be more than three inches from the bottom end. Yes. Okay. It would be necessary to increase the beam depth in order to provide for two. Then that is the uh, effect. That is the effect. Okay. Because the centroid of the uh, of the steel bars will change. Okay. The centroid would be the center of mass of the steel bars. Okay, next example. So, take a look. Very 
fast. Very fast. Take a look very fast. Because we do not have time. So, check. So, step 1. Then, step 2, check. Still yield. So, after checking, still yield. Then, uh, find out the theoretical. Then, try. After you find out the theoretical, then try the size. Then, check and confirm. So, after trying, confirm, subsequent check using actual steel areas reveal. So, we have what? 0 0.00495. So, in my case, I will accept this even though it is less than 0 0.005 because it is more than 0 0.004 anyway. So, therefore, uh, phi is not equal to 0.9 we have to do the the what the ratio in proportion okay let us do the ratio in proportion how to do it 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 that is the the uh, proportion okay that is the straight line 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 we have I show you two types of straight line okay from 0 0.003 to 0 0 0.005 I already shown you so please do the necessary algebra in order to find out that the phi is not 0 0.009 but uh, the phi is not 0 0.9 but 0 0.896 okay 0.896 so just multiply then you can get the area Okay, so MU is uh, greater by 1%. Okay? So that is our uh, last example for the English units. So we have the example for SI units. So you can do it this way. So I will not... Uh, Make this longer, or let us just determine the, the sine strength, okay, meaning phi times uh, nominal moment. So we have Fy 420. 420 is equivalent to uh, 4,000 psi. So Fc prime 35. So usually 30 is the usual value. So it is a uh, 35. So actually, this is uh, 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 37 point eight. So that is equivalent to 4 ksi. So it is 200 GPA. 200 GPA is equal to 200,000 MPA. So we have T. So for area of concrete. So we have mm as our given. So I am very much familiar with this, but please familiarize yourself too. Okay. So the same step. The uh, difference is the unit. So we are using unit in SI. Okay. So minimum, minimum. Uh, let us find out which one is to be used okay this one or this one okay so therefore uh, calculate design strength okay uh, find out the uh, labor arm then multiply labor arm then 0.9 so why do you use 0.9 because uh, you have what fy fy okay yielding so next problem, another rectangular bar. I will uh, assign this to you. I will skip this explanation. If you have any question regarding this example, please uh, use our GC. That is the last example. Okay. 
Then computer example, uh, you can use your Excel to to do this. I uh, have the Excel files to do this that I did on my own. I did on my own. I just follow. I just follow the procedure. It's following here, following here, following the computation. What all the uh, uh, the necessary computation in the Excel formula. Okay. So that is our example computer type example. Okay. So using uh, Excel. And so on. So those are the different examples. Now you will have the problems. Do the problems as much as you can. So, what is the effective width of the T-beam? So, what does it represent? Very important. What factors affect the selection of the dimension of T-beam? Stems. Okay, very important. Okay. What uh, additional uh, Reinforcing bars are placed only in the compression side. Will they add significantly to beam's flexural strength? Explain. Why is compression reinforcing particularly important in the reinforced concrete flexural members located in? Uh, so, <laughs> we cannot go further to the earthquake <laughs> design. So, the, the reason is okay. This is actually... Uh, important but uh, it's not yet explained, not yet in this chapter uh, it is much later, actually the last chapter here okay. okay so problem solving, analysis and then uh, we have different type of beam here this is inverted U okay and this is what? This is a hole. There is a hole. Rectangular hole. Okay. So, how to solve this? So, using the centroid analysis of components. Components. So, you can rearrange this to look like Katy. You can rearrange this to look like Katy. Okay. Using the uh, solid mechanics, so oh, you know this very well. Maybe how to do this, but the example, the procedure is the same with T. L, angular, or this one. Oh, again, this one. Or oh, letter I, I shape beam. The procedure, procedure is the same. Procedurally the same. So those are the topics. Again, we have what? Integrally. Uh, cured in one unit. Okay. So, we have design. So, this is this design portion. Design portion. So there are 17 problems for analysis and there are how many problems for design. These are for the design. Oh, meaning this this is a slab. This is how you draw a slab. Okay? T beams. These are the T beams supporting this slab. So this is the plan view. This is a plan view of this slab. This is how you draw it. Maybe your engineering plan as this okay and before i forget aside from this problem solving you can practice your engineering plan okay with addition if there are what uh, uh slab and beam connection slab and beam connection so, inverted t so, inverted t so we have this inverted t so letter i inverted t how to do it so very on so another hole with hole 
More on what? Well, again, inverted T. So, inverted T, we do not have rectangle. We do not have circle. Oh, it is uh, similar. We have rectangle and circle there. So, we have now, this is uh, what? doubly reinforced SI unit type of problems. So, there are several so, in addition, there is a question, the most, the most difficult question, so maybe I will use this as our final exam. What? Cost and still percentage diagram. So, we have to use this one. This is the optimum, the most economical. This is the most economical part because the diagram is like this. Okay. So, the most economical use of steel. And that's all. Actually, the next uh, chapter is serviceability. What we cannot do it anymore. We will end uh, in this chapter, I think. I think this is the end. I don't know if uh, we can still... I uh, have the lecture uh, next week because we will have what? Six hours of lecture, but we, we have only what? Uh, one hour or two hours or three hours of exam. Three hours of exam and uh, three hours of lecture maybe next week. I do not know. I will just post on our GC any question. So first... Uh, So we have so many lab, so many live chat. Okay, we have what best adult dating site? Oh no, naked is the fun. Okay. Um, I do not know who is this. Who is this? Let us... Ah. Report. Okay, if there are no questions. So, therefore, uh, please... Uh, just uh, take a break and uh, we will uh, just uh, post the uh, notice. Again, uh, this is uh, Dr. Rippy, Preaching Engineering for Nation Building. Hey, uh, see uh, everybody, see you later.